In this video, we'll look at how to set up a MySQL database using Docker. Let's get started. Here are the high level steps we need to do. First, we download the Docker application. Next, we set up an account on Docker Hub. Then we run Docker and download the MySQL image. Then we run the MySQL image. Finally, we connect to the database and run some SQL. This video is demonstrated on a Mac, but should work in a similar way on Windows. To get started, we need to download the Docker application. This is freely available from the Docker website at www.docker.com. Once the website is loaded, click on Get Started. On the Get Started page, there are several options. Click on Docker Desktop. The other two options, Docker Hub and Play with Docker, are not needed for our process. Select the right version for your computer, which is either of the two Mac versions or a Windows version. The Docker setup file will then begin downloading. It's about 580 megabytes, which could take a few minutes to download. Once the download is complete, install it. This can be done by opening the file on macOS and dragging it to the applications folder or following the installation steps on Windows. It takes a couple of minutes to install. Once it's installed, you can run it. This will cause the Docker service to start. I believe you can also run it from the command line or from elsewhere in Mac, like in the applications folder, but this is the approach that has worked for me and will hopefully work for you too. Now we've got Docker running, it's time to get our database files. The files that Docker uses to run applications are called images, which are a pre-built collection of files. These images are available on a website called Docker Hub. There is a whole range of images there, but the one we're looking for is for MySQL. So we'll need to visit the Docker Hub website, set up an account, find the right image, and then start using it. Let's see how we can do that. First, visit the Docker Hub website at hub.docker.com. You'll need an account to access the Docker images, so click on the Sign Up button. Enter your details on the Sign Up page. Remember the password you enter here, as you'll need it later. The next page is the Choose Your Plan page. There are a couple of options, but for now you can select the free plan. This is enough for our purposes. Follow the steps to verify your email address. You will now have an account on Docker Hub. Now we've logged into Docker Hub, it's time to find the image for the MySQL database. We're going to get the URL for the image and then use this URL as part of a command we'll run on the command line. To find the image, Enter the term MySQL into the search bar at the top of the page. Click on the MySQL entry here, and you'll be taken to this page. If you scroll down a little, you can see a few sample commands under the How to use this image section. Copy the command from the first example here, which says Docker run, and is a template that you can edit before running. There are a few things to note in this command. There are two dashes and then a name keyword then sum-mysql. This sum-mysql is the name of the image, which you can change if you like. This name is what is used when you start and stop the image on your computer. The dash e refers to environment variables. There is only one in this command, and it's called mysql underscore root underscore password. This is where we set the root password. In this example, it's specified as my-secret-pw. This is something you can also change before you run the command, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. The dash D means detached mode, which means the container runs in the background and we can use our terminal for other commands. The final part is the path to the image on Docker Hub, which will be downloaded. This is the word MySQL, followed by a colon and then the word tag. The tag is the version that can be downloaded. So copy this command. We'll make a couple of modifications to this command before we run it, which you may find easier to do if you paste it into a text editor. At the top is our command from the Docker Hub page. We need to make two changes. First, we remove the colon and the tag. This is a placeholder and is where you specify which version you want to download. By default, it will download the latest version, so if we remove the tag, then that's what will happen. The second thing is to add a parameter of dash "-p", which is short for port. We then add two numbers, 3306, separated by a colon. 
This will expose or open the port from the Docker container to our main operating system or our host operating system. This will allow us to use a program such as MySQL Workbench to connect to the database. If we leave this out, then we'll have to run commands on terminal to run SQL, which is not ideal. You can change the name of the image, which is sum-mysql here, to something else if you want. And you can change the MySQL root password to something else. But the default values in the command will work just fine. Now we have our command updated, we need to run it. To do this, we need to open a command line or a terminal. I'll open the terminal app as I'm on a Mac, but I believe the command line on Windows will work in the same way. Once the terminal app is open, we can start the process of getting our Docker image. We're going to do three things. Log in, then download the image, then run it. We need to log in to the Docker Hub account first. This is done using the Docker login command. Enter Docker login at the command line and press enter. You will be asked to enter your username and password, which is what you provided when you created the Docker Hub account. Now we've logged in, we can download the image. This can be done using the docker pull command, which is the command in the black box we saw on the docker hub page. However, we can also use the docker run command, which will run the container if it exists on your computer already, and download it if it does not exist. So paste the command here in the terminal window that you updated from earlier in this video. Then press enter to run the command. The image will start downloading, and it may take a few minutes. Once the docker run command has completed, the image will start up. This can take a minute or two. If you get an error about the name already being used, then it's likely because you've run this command in the past and the container name of sum-mysql is already created. If so, you can start the existing container. To do this, type docker start, then the name of sum-mysql. After a moment, the image will start up. To check the status of your containers, you can run the command docker ps. This shows a list of all images that are running. In the status column, you'll see something like starting to indicate that the container is starting up. Run the docker ps command again in a minute or two, and you should see healthy or up 10 seconds. This means the container is running. Awesome, we now have a docker container running with our MySQL database. Let's connect to it and run some SQL. We'll use MySQL Workbench to connect, which is a freely available IDE that works on Windows and Mac OS. You can use whatever IDE you want. The process should be similar, but the screens will just look different in each IDE. For now, I'll assume you have an IDE ready, such as MySQL Workbench, so open it now. Click Create a New Connection and you'll see this window here. The connection details are available on the image page on Docker Hub and are also in the command we ran, and we'll enter them here. For the host, enter localhost. For the username, enter root. For the password, enter the password you provided when you ran the terminal command earlier. By default, this is my-secret-pw. Enter a name for the connection, such as MySQL Docker. Leave everything else as the default, and then click test. If everything has been set up correctly, the connection should be successful. If there are any errors, take a look at the description and comments where I'll list a few ways to resolve them. You can then click OK to save the connection. Click on the new connection on the grid here, and after a moment you'll be connected to the database. You should see a screen that looks like this. A new SQL tab will be displayed. Enter a simple query such as select now and run it. This should show the current date and time. You'll see the output on the screen here. Congratulations, you've successfully set up a MySQL database inside a Docker container and connected to it. If you have any errors, let me know in the comments below. I'll put some resources in the description for some common issues as well. To stop the database, you can run the docker stop command. Go back to the terminal and enter docker stop sum-mysql, where sum-mysql is the name of your container. This will stop the container and the MySQL database. To start it again, use the docker run command we saw earlier. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. I'll create some other videos to cover things like persisting data and automatically running scripts. If you learned something new from this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about database design and development, 
visit DatabaseStar.com. That's where I share my best database-related content. Which part of this Docker tutorial was the most helpful for you? Was it the command to actually run the container, or the steps to connect to the database using your IDE, or something else? Thanks for watching.